Cape Cod has been our place of vacation uh, every year for as long as I've been alive, as long as I can remember. Um, it's been a special place to all of us, uh, and it's really the little things in Cape Cod that have made it so special to me, at least. The sun rises at 5 a.m. on Coast Guard Beach, the uh, fried shrimp dinners at the Lobster Claw. Uh, there are little things every year that we both, you know, we can, we have an opportunity to find out new things and go try new things, but we also have our tradition. And I think that's what makes it special to me and the rest of our family. It was the summer before my freshman year in college, and we went to Cape Cod. Me and my dad have been golfing a lot, um, and it, it was up to that point vacation as normal. But right after, I think either on my mom's birthday, August 2nd, or right after, I woke up with a real discomfort in my chest, and I had this weird sensation in my brain. Uh, I didn't feel right. I felt displaced, disassociated. Uh, a lot of the stuff that you normally hear about anxiety, and so I initially thought maybe I'm just having a little anxiety attack or thinking too much. Uh, but as the day went on and the pain in my chest started, uh, I really started to get concerned about what's going on in my body. I remember biking to the basketball court and I was playing and that pain overtook my entire chest uh, and I felt very dizzy and I called my dad and I said, I think we need to get this checked out today. But I knew something was wrong. And even if the test didn't show that, it, I didn't feel right. One night, it got really bad and my chest just really started to hurt. And I went up to my mom and dad and I said, I think we need to call an ambulance. I think I need to go to the hospital again. The scary thing is that it was so unknown. I had no idea what was going on in my body and that fear and panic made it 10 times worse. With uh, Lyme disease being as prevalent as it is in the area, mentioned testing for that. And so that was just kind of a shot in the dark as we'll test you for Lyme disease. Never even heard of Lyme disease as I didn't know anyone that had Lyme disease. Uh, I didn't know how prevalent it was, especially where we are in New York State. In one visit to the Hyannis Hospital where I went in the ambulance, a nurse who was just getting the insurance information, uh, she asked, Jonah, by any chance, did you ever get bitten by a tick? Or did you get bitten by a tick recently? And I said, well, not to my knowledge. But that was the first time anyone had even mentioned Lyme disease uh, as a possible reason for why I'm feeling this way. You know, I'm, I'm with mom and dad on the opening day and we're on the soccer field and, and our president, Linda Lamira, is saying, welcome freshmen, we're happy to have you here. Uh, but 20 minutes prior, I was throwing up in a flower bed, uh, not feeling well, and it's 88 degrees or 90 degrees, and uh, I was just scared, not only for the pressures of college, but I was scared that this wasn't gonna go away even in this new chapter of my life. The standard treatment that our pediatrician told me about was 28 days of doxycycline, and that would kick it right out of your system. After that 28 days, uh, the next day I woke up the same way, uh, with the weird sensation in my brain, a very depressive attitude uh, that I'd never experienced before. I'd never been a kid with depression or anxiety and that was heightened. My chest hurt, I had pressure in my chest. Uh, and, and that continued on throughout the 28 days and didn't stop on the 29th. So the doxycycline didn't really do much to help me at all. Uh, it just, you know, it, it turned out to be useless and that pain and struggle continued on for the foreseeable future. The idea of PT, LDS, or post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome was not a, and it still really isn't, but it, it, it was not even thought of as a medical phenomenon. There wasn't any, at least doctors in my arena, that thought this, these symptoms can go on for six to 12 months and pass that with Lyme disease you know, patients. Uh, it was kind of just scoffed at in, in the medical community. I felt very voiceless, I felt not heard. there's a point of helplessness that you reach that this is never gonna get better. It's never gonna improve. 
And so I started to turn to a lot of different things to try and distract myself. Um, I pursued a relationship and um, meet new friends and did a lot of things that were healthy, but I also uh, resorted to a lot of things that were damaging to my health to try and cloud the already clouded brain that I had. So I was drinking a profuse amount to try and, and, and fall asleep. Uh, I had to wake up every morning and I watched the same video every morning on, uh, in my freshman dorm with my headphones in before class about how to get through depression, how to somehow get out of your bed. Um, and it, it was just the... Ah, uh, yeah, that was just the worst time ever, so. Medical professionals, as I was going through my process, also were going through their process of learning and adapting to it and starting to recognize it as more of a chronic illness, a possible chronic illness. Eventually, uh, you know, this past fall when I went back to the ER finally on the diagnosis it's uh, complications due to chronic Lyme disease syndrome so finally someone had it written on paper that this is a real thing and that felt great but the thing with a chronic illness is you also have to improve yourself to get you know yourself to feeling better the drinking the you know any sort of drug that you're taking anything like that is only going to hurt your case uh, you, you have to exercise, you have to keep a positive attitude, you have to try day in and day out, and then eventually that becomes your new normal. You might not feel great every day, I'm never going to be that energized kid that I was that last day I remember feeling energized on Coast Guard Beach and just diving into the ocean with my cargo shorts on because that's how much energy I had and uh, clear-minded. I, I don't know if that's ever going to be exactly the case. But you have to, with any chronic illness, and there are a lot that are worse than mine, that you have to put in the work yourself. <laughs> For the longest time, I wouldn't even step on grass. I, I would go into my backyard, and if you know my dad was grilling, I'd stay on the pavement and, and just take every precaution I can. I didn't golf, I didn't go outside and do anything because I was so, obviously, you know, too, this little tiny bug takes two years of your life you're like, well, I'm not going to let that little bug bite me again. In the case of this new pandemic that we're going through, a lot of it is the way that it's similar to the way that I felt early on with Lyme disease is it's the great unknown. You know, there's people dealing with symptoms and things that scare the shit out of them, but they can't do anything about it. There's no vaccine. There's no treatment. And that's the same thing with a chronic Lyme disease. There is no exact treatment. There is no... Uh, one magic pill you take and boom, your coronavirus is gone. These people who are suffering God knows what symptoms, they're scared and they're in a dark place and they don't know if it'll get better. So there's a lot of comparisons between the two and anybody with an illness that's not fully understood, it's just you're engulfed with fear. You have to take risks in life. You can't, you're not going to have 100% security that you're not going to get something. You can get it in your backyard or you can get it um, and that's the case for anything. Anything can happen any day. So you, I, I eventually started, you know, taking a few steps back and getting more comfortable going out into nature and the nature that I love. Going to the Adirondacks and hiking mountains with, you know, my cousin Ethan and, and Zach and, and going ahead and running off trail and just enjoying nature as it is. Um, that doesn't mean you don't have to be careful. Uh, I now take the precautions of checking myself after I go out in nature, something I never would have thought of doing before I got sick. You need to have something ripped away from you in life in order to really enjoy it. I took everything for granted before I got Lyme disease. I took Coast Guard Beach and things. I loved them. I appreciated them. But I'd be like, okay, yeah, that's cool. Now I have such a deep appreciation, especially when I'm feeling clear-headed and feeling healthy and out for a run and out for, a, you know, going out to the sunrise at Cape Cod. It's more of a majestic experience now as that this isn't here forever.